Mattresses are harder to come by, and when you find one, it's more expensive than it used to be. Here's why. Hey, it's the Beducator, Jeff Shire. If you've been shopping for a mattress this past year, you've noticed how the prices have increased pretty dramatically since March of 2020. Now, there are some real reasons for these price increases, but I don't see too many retailers or industry executives addressing this in detail. I would think that as a group, we want to publicly justify the reasons for these price increases. But I can't say that transparency and honesty are two pegs upon which the mattress industry tends to hang its collective hat. So let's take a brief look at the chronology of how we got to where we are today. After the first national lockdown in the spring of 2020, most sleep shops started to open around May. There was pent up demand because of this shutdown. Plus many consumers had April stimulus cash burning a hole in their pocket. Orders skyrocketed. There was a shortage not only of the componentry used to make mattresses, but finished mattresses themselves. Now, if you've taken basic economics, you understand how the supply demand curve works. We had very low supply, very high demand and prices increased. Componentry shortage was the major issue, specifically the non-woven materials used to wrap pocketed springs and also used for the general construction of mattresses. This material was prioritized for PPE, so we had a very large shortage of pocketed springs domestically. Latex foam rubber was in short supply because we couldn't get the precursor material and we also had issues with staffing and labor at the factories. Wood for foundations was in very short supply. Just ask anybody building a house these days how they're coming along with their wood. That's what she said. Michael Scott, the office. Flexible polyurethane foam was also hard to come by because the precursor chemicals, isocyanate and polyols were in short supply. And just in general, anything coming from overseas, the supply chains were also incredibly disrupted by COVID. Now labor, specifically the lack and retraining thereof, also figured prominently into these delays in price increases. With the passage of the CARES Act and these funds being added to the already existing state unemployment benefits, many workers on both the componentry and finished product end of the spectrum decided to stay at home and make more money collecting unemployment benefits than working. And to be fair to them, there are some componentry and finished product suppliers in our industry who have a bit of a notorious reputation of not paying so well and many of these jobs were for unskilled workers. So these workers' decision to stay at home and not return to work, well, that wasn't entirely unexpected. So this lack of employees, the retraining of these employees, and the slower pace that these employees worked, well, this all resulted in less and more costly production. And on top of everything else, various COVID protocols were put into place by local, state, and federal government agencies, further decreasing efficiency, reducing output, and increasing the cost of production. Through the summer and fall of 2020, we still had shortages in steel, flexible polyurethane foam, lumber, and most importantly, non-woven materials. The component suppliers had no choice but to increase their prices to the mattress manufacturers. The mattress manufacturers in turn had to increase their prices to the retailers and the retailers had to increase their prices to the consumer. Consumer demand in the fall of 2020 remained very high, even though the prices had increased. And in many cases, consumers were having to wait eight to 12 weeks for a finished mattress. As 2021 came around, the supply chain was slowly starting to get caught up, but still it was nothing close to normal. Then the second round of stimulus payments came through and consumer demand for finished mattresses went up dramatically again, but the component suppliers were still nowhere near being able to meet this demand and component prices continued to rise. I spoke with one mattress manufacturer and he said that from January to the beginning of March of 2021, just a few months, his raw material costs for lumber went up 45%, flexible polyurethane foam went up 25% and steel went up 8%. And then in February, we had this huge unexpected deep freeze hit the south and this drove the price of flexible polyurethane foam through the roof and through the entire industry into a complete tailspin. And let me explain how that happened. 
Simply stated, flexible polyurethane foam is a reaction between isocyanates, polyols, and water. Most of the facilities producing these chemicals in the United States are located along the Gulf Coast, and they were all knocked out by this deep freeze and many sustained damage. To get into a bit more detail, propylene is the monomer precursor chemical for the production of polyol, and polyol is the main ingredient in polyurethane foam. Almost all the propylene production was knocked out in the United States due to the storm. On top of that, a majority of isocyanate production, the other major ingredient in polyurethane foam called TDI, was knocked out due to the storm. So, in one fell swoop, the two main ingredients for the production of polyurethane foam went to zero overnight. And the foam manufacturers can't pour any flexible polyurethane foam for anybody without these ingredients. Because of the storm, most polyurethane foam companies and chemical suppliers started speaking French. Force majeure, force majeure. Contracts were suspended and prices increased. Domestic propylene supplies had been at very low levels before the storm, and the prices had been near 10-year highs. So this was just Mother Nature having a really good laugh at us and dogpiling on our current supply issues. The polyurethane foam companies had to react, and they started rationing production to about 50 to 60 percent levels to their clients. Now, as the mattress manufacturers had already been at very low levels of backstock of foam within their factories, we can expect delays in finished mattress production, and this will also be followed by price increases on finished mattresses for the next few months. Now, I know that's a lot of bad news. The good news is these factories can be repaired. But again, a little bad news, it's gonna take a few months for that to happen, for the repairs to be made, as well as the complicated startup procedure. The factories were designed to withstand hurricanes, but it's a bit of a complicated shutdown process, and they really didn't have enough notice to do a proper shutdown before this big ice storm hit, what the locals called ice apocalypse. So these are the main reasons for the delays and price increases in the mattress industry. It's a real thing. Hopefully our industry can start to get back to normal towards the, the latter end of 2021. Here's keeping our fingers crossed.